Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the lens equation and also about specific things that we typically want to look for when we're dealing with lenses. Here we have the lens equation in the typical format. 1 over the focal length equals 1 over s, s represents the distance to the object, plus 1 over s prime, where s prime represents the distance to the image. Here we have a graphical representation of that. Here's the lens. We have the optical axis down the middle. There's the focal point on both sides of the lens. Of course, the real focal point is over here, but this is the mirror image of the focal point on the front side of the lens. Let's place the object here. This is the object height. We represent the object by the letter O. And the distance from the lens to the object is S. Now, in some texts, they will actually use the letter P. So either P or S is the distance to the object. I will be using S because that's what I'm used to. And then let's say an image forms on the other side of the lens. Therefore, this becomes a real image because it's on the other side of the lens. And the distance to the image is called S prime or Q. Some texts will actually use the letter Q for the distance. Others will use S prime for the image distance. And so typically they want us to solve for S prime. They want us to solve for where the image occurs and therefore we're looking for S prime. Most likely, whenever they give you a problem like this, they will ask you to find the image distance, S prime. And so let's put that over here. They will want to know, or they will ask you, if the image is real or virtual. Now, in the case of a lens, if the image appears on the right side, on the other side relative to the object, on the right side of the lens, then it's called a real image. If the image forms on the same side as the object, on the left side of the lens, then it's called a virtual image. How do you know which way it is? Well, by looking at the image distance. If the image distance is positive, we know it's a real image because that means it's on the right side of the lens. If the image distance is negative, then it's a virtual image because then it's on the left side of the lens. Also, they'll be asking for the magnification and we'll show you in just a moment how to find the magnification of the image. How big is the image relative to the object? We use the letter M for that. And then they'll want to know if the image is inverted or upright. So here, if the object is upright, then the image may be inverted right here. Or, if the object is upright, the image may be upright as well. And we know that by looking at the sign of the magnification. If the magnification is negative, then we know that the image is inverted. If the magnification is positive, then we know that the image is right side up. So let's take that equation and solve that equation for S prime because then it makes it easier to work with it so we can easily find the image distance. So first what we do is we'll move the 1 over S to the other side, turn the equation around, so we'll get 1 over S prime equals 1 over F minus 1 over S. Now we'll find the common denominator which is F times S. So we can write 1 over S prime is equal to 1 over F we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by s minus 1 over s and we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by f. Notice now we have the same denominator. That means we can subtract one from the other. So now we get 1 over s prime is equal to, here we get s minus f divided by the product of s times f. And then we can take the inverse of that and we write S prime is equal to SF divided by S minus F. And this form of the equation makes it a lot easier to find S prime. For example, if we know that the focal length, let's for example, let's say that the focal length is equal to 20 centimeters. And let's say that object distance S is equal to 30 centimeters. And we want to know what S prime is equal to. Using this equation, we can say, okay, let's plug in the numbers. S, we said, was 30. F was 20, divided by 30 minus 20. Let me move out of the way here so you can see what I'm doing. 30 minus 20. So I'm simply plugging in values for the distance to the object, S, and the focal length, F. This becomes equal to 600, divided by 10, which is 60. Of course, the units were centimeters, so the answer would be that the image distance, S prime, is 60 centimeters. Since it's positive, that means that it's a real image. It's on the right side of the lens, 60 centimeters away from the lens. Now we want to know what the magnification is. 
it turns out that the magnification is equal to minus the ratio of s prime over s. That's the equation. Plug it in the values. This would be equal to minus s prime, which is 60 centimeters, divided by s, which is 30 centimeters. Therefore, the magnification is a minus 2. This means that the image is twice the size of the object. However, the negative sign indicates that it's upside down or inverted. Inverted means m is a negative, or m negative means that it's inverted. This indicates it's an inverted image as it's drawn here, and the image is twice the size as the object. I didn't quite get that right here, but then of course I just threw some random numbers in there. But this is typically what we're asked to do. Now what's the most confusing part is to realize what happens to the image when the object moves closer to the focal point or farther away from the focal point or ends up inside between the lens and the focal point and moves back and forth between the two. And what happens to the image when it gets when the object is right on top of the focal point and so forth. We'll answer all those questions in later videos. At least at this point you have what you need to figure these things out. You know how to calculate the magnification, you know how to calculate the distance to the image, and you know what the numbers mean depending upon the sign of the numbers and how to calculate them. And that's how we'll get started on determining how the image changes as we move the object around. And that's how it's done.